Hey everybody, David here. Today we are going to look at the question 7.67 from the Circuit Analysis and Design Textbook by Yulabi Maharpas N. Furs. This is a textbook from the United University of Michigan. It's available for free online, which is fantastic because it is chock full of great information. If you are in the class that I'm in, it is the official textbook and we are doing homework and quiz questions out of it. If you are here for my class, you recognize this from a recent quiz caused a bunch of issues. So we're going to go over it real quick and take a look at what happened. First thing we're going to want to do is go through and label all of our components. We have our current source here, IS, our dependent current source, ID, the current that we will be looking to find, which is IC. We also have an inductor, L1, three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, and a capacitor, C1. We are also going to want to label our currents. So we have I1. I always start in the bottom left and label clockwise. I2 is up at the top, and I3 in the bottom right. Now that we've done that, Let's go ahead and look at what we actually have to calculate. Starting with our current source, this is given to us in time domain. So that will be, let's bring it over here. I source is equal to six cosine 2.5 times 10 to the four. It's an interesting 10 t and we will do plus zero just to get it into proper form and let's go ahead and break that out we have six so our amplitude ia is six we have 2.5 times 10 to the four so that will be our omega to the fourth, and then we have our phi, which is our phase angle of zero. Phi equals zero. So each one of these components we will be using in a separate part of our equation. It helps to break them out just to uh, reference them directly. If we wanted to put this in, uh, excuse me, phaser domain, it would be six amps at an angle of zero degrees. Let's go ahead and uh, calculate our Z values. That is the impedance of all of the components. Once you are in AC, you will be using impedance instead of resistance, but the calculations are largely the same. You do have to find your Z values. For a resistor, the impedance is equal to the resistance. For an inductor, however, the impedance is equal to omega. Let's, uh, L1 is equal to our omega. And you'll notice that I am keeping it in the variable names. We will uh, plug it all into MATLAB and make it work for us. So L1 is equal to omega times the component value. And now we just self-referenced there. Any programmers in the audience will be cringing just a little bit times 1j to make it a complex number. The, actually, let's fix that. Z1, ZL. Let's call it ZL. So now we have ZC is equal to negative 1 over omega times capacitance value, again, times 1j j being the uh, equivalent to I in electrical engineering. Now that we have all that, let's go ahead and jump down here and start building our equations. So we have I1. I1 is nice and easy. It is given to us. I1 is actually just IS. I2, equally easy. That is given to us also. It is ID. which is also equal to 3IC. 
Now this would be uh, an example of a current amplifier with a gain of three. So however much you have going through here, you have three times as much being pushed through there. I3 is where we get to a little bit of math that we have to do. I3 is equal to, and we're going in a clockwise direction here, we have Z1 or ZC1. I think I called it ZC. Yeah, ZC. So we have ZC times I3 minus I1, because it's going in the opposite direction, I1. And we have plus R2, and that is times I3 minus I2. I2 is the opposing current. And then we have plus R3, that is by itself, so it is times I3. Again, very similar equations to DC, just have a little bit of complex numbers in there as well. While we are here, let's go ahead and calculate IC. IC is simply equal to I1 minus I3. And you'll see why I threw that in there in a moment. Let's go ahead and draw a line, come over here and distribute our terms. I1, well, that's still equal to IS, I source. I2, on the other hand, we're going to bring over this 3IC. So it's I2 minus 3IC is equal to zero. We're going to start with I1, and that is a negative term times ZC. So it's times negative ZC plus I2, and that is a negative R2. And then we have I3, and that is times ZC plus R2 plus R3. So we have ZC, R2, R3, and that is all equal to zero. And for IC, I'm going to go ahead and bring over both of these currents here. So IC plus I3, I'm doing this backwards, but minus I1 is equal to zero. So why did I include the ICs in all of this? Well, there are two ways to solve, well, there's a million ways to solve this problem, but one of the ways that you could solve this problem is to just calculate I1, I2, and I3. Then you have your I1 and I3 here, and you can do a separate calculation to find IC. Or you can just throw IC into the mix of your linear equations, and you can go ahead and solve that all at once. And that's what I did, because it's easy, and I'm lazy. Let's go ahead and uh, come down here. We've made it to orange, and we are going to set up our matrix. And we're going to want four terms. We're going to want I1, I2, I3, and IC. I1 for the first equation, I1 is equal to IS, so we have 1I1, nothing of anything else. We're going to set that equal to IS. Everything else over here is equal to 0, so we can fill in that matrix, 0, 0, 0. I2, so we have 0I1s, 1I2, 0i3s, and negative 3. Uh -huh. Don't need that part there. Just negative 3 in the IC column. Next equation. We are on our, I, our third equation. We have a negative ZC for our I1 term. 
for our I, ter I two term, we have a negative R2. For we have a ZC. Make a lot of room here. ZC plus R2 plus R3. For our I three term, then we have zero in our IC term. Coming down to our fourth and final equation, we have it's a little bit out of order, so I'm just going to do it backwards. We have one IC, one I3, negative one I1, and a zero in the I2 column. So here we have our matrix to solve. We have our answer column matrix. Let's jump over to MATLAB, where we will finish this out. So over here, you can see where I have my, uh, my MATLAB script set up. I do a little doodle up here for future reference of the circuit. It takes more time than it's worth, but it kind of helps me wrap my head around it. And it gives me something to look at when I'm down here actually building the equations. So we have the amplitude of our source as six. And I put a little comment off to the side over here with the book value in case I go through and change any of these values after the fact. I'll know uh, how to take it back to the original. We have our phi source, or phase angle, which is zero. We have our omega source, which is our 2.5 times 10 to the fourth. And then we have our current source in the phasor domain, no, in the exponent, whatever. This, this equation right here. We have our amplitude source times the times e raised to the 1j times phi. Phi is zero. This is moot point. But if you do ever put in a phase angle, it will still calculate correctly. Coming down to our component values, we have our R1, R2, and R3, 10, 5, and 10. We have our C1 and L1. These are the actual capacitance values and uh, inductance values. And then we have ZC1 and ZL1, which are our impedances. You can see the uh, C is negative one over whatever, and the L1 is omega source. That's an O, not a zero. And we come down here to our matrices. And uh, going back to our doodle, one and three zeros, zero, one, zero, negative three. One and three zeros, zero, one, zero, negative three. The rest is just brought over from our equations. We have double D as our coefficient matrix and KK as our answer matrix. In traditional MATLAB form, I just use DD backslash KK. This will find the answers to these equations up here. And I set it as the variable II. The IC that we are looking for is II4. Why MATLAB doesn't start at zero for indices, I don't understand. But please make sure that you start with uh, start with one when you are using an indexed variable, not zero. Messed me up the first couple of times. Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and run this. And you can see that I got my IC value as 1.0800. That is our real value plus 1.44, that is our complex value. If you wanted to convert this to phasor domain, where you got a, uh, a magnitude and an angle, what you would need to do is use the Cartesian to polar, cart to pol function, and you would extract your real component and your imaginary component. MATLAB has functions for both of those, and you would set that equal to a theta and a rho. TH and R in this case. Um, if you do not set a, a two, uh, basically a tuple here, it will not come, uh, will not calculate the right value. And, uh, that'll mess you up too. So definitely come down and read the, uh, read the help file on any of these functions. It will tell you what it outputs. Moving on, you would then calculate the alpha or the angle by using radians to degrees, rad to deg, on the theta value, and you can finally output the tuple of your rho and alpha, R-H-O, not R-O-W. 
see what that looks like. We have 1.8 as the magnitude with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees.